my uh, my story that that or Liz's story uh, that I share with you uh, today by far will pale pale in comparison uh, to the three people that just preceded me. Um, I I really. In, in the years that I've been with Bancroft and the years that I've seen Liz be taken care of, um, stories that come directly from the people that have conquered brain injuries or deal with brain injuries are truly not only inspiring to me. Um, I, 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 was, I was asked to do this, I think, more or less for a different perspective, you know, a perspective of a family, maybe not as a parent or somebody that's injured, um, but truly those those words that come directly from the people um, just mean more. So I think my story will be, or Liz's story, I should say, um, will be a little bit different that you hear, um, but certainly not as inspiring. Um, you know, Elizabeth, who was in the back of the room and did not want to come up. <coughs> um, <laughs> give you a little brief history. I'm, I'm the youngest of five. Liz is right ahead of me. Um, so she's, she's the fourth member of our family. And it was January 4th, 1988. Um, I was about 14 years old and the phone rang. And <clears throat> it was one of those times as a kid, and I was an immature kid at the time, but I was you know, sitting there on the couch watching TV. And when my mom picked up the phone, it was one of those moments where you could see in her face something was really wrong. And the only word I heard her say was, trauma ward you know that that's really bad and then she hung up and the next thing I knew my best friend's father was coming over to take my parents to the hospital um, you know they, they immediately left and I'm sitting there as a 14 year old kid a little bit of a stupid kid because I ran to the dictionary looked up trauma really quick and figured out this this really is pretty bad um, you know in a a very, very close family, you know, that we were, or that we are, I should say. Um, to see what had happened, but to see it through a perspective of not only my sister being hurt, but how my parents not only reacted, but had to live with that reality, um, was different, and it was difficult. Um, you know, Liz, as a, um, you know, as a kid, uh, was always very active. She's big into gymnastics, big into softball, great athlete. Um, still is a beautiful girl. You know, Liz was your typical prom queen, homecoming queen. Um, and in a moment's notice, that was all taken away. And, you know, I still remember, you know, the first time we went into, um, you know, the hospital to see her and we were all taken back. And the one moment that stuck was probably about two weeks after it happened. You know, Liz was in a coma for four months, but two weeks into it, you know, the doctors pulled my entire family in, uh, sat us around, and basically told my parents, you know, at the time, look, you have to make a decision. And I know it's not PC anymore, but I remember the words. They just sat around and they said, look, you have to make a decision. You know, do you want us to pull the plug? And you could just see, you know, the weight of that question, especially on my father, because Liz was always his little girl, and they decided not to, thank God. And that's, I think, really what started, at least for our family, you know, our little miracle that happened. Because we, at that point, I think at a low point right there, thought we were gonna lose her. And even if we didn't lose her, we didn't know what we would get back. And one of the harder things, watching it as, a child, when I say child, I was a teenager, but I didn't have kids, I really didn't have responsibilities like most teenagers at that point, um, was watching my parents be put in a situation where it was a complete unknown. You know, where do you turn when you have a brain injury as a parent to care for that person? You know, this was 1988 when the accident happened. Probably, you know, when you had to start looking for care for Liz, it was probably somewhere around 1989, 1990. You know, it's not like you look up the yellow pages and all, the fudden, all of a sudden you can find great care, you know, for brain injury. You know, you started to ask questions about where do you go or what do you find? And at the time, you know, we lived in southern New Jersey. 
and the best place that we could find was in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. And that meant that four days a week, my parents got in a car and went to Langhorne and drove and then drove back the same day. And that in itself made it difficult because it wasn't close. <laughs> if you know Liz, one thing that hasn't changed is her love for getting her nails done and looking good. And so one day when, when I was walking her in the mall on Sunday, we came across someone who was sort of staring at us, you know, as we walked down the hallway. And I thought, you know, I don't know, maybe she's just staring because, I don't know, Liz is in a wheelchair, or maybe, I don't know, maybe she knows me, or maybe she knows Liz. You know, and her name was Cynthia Boyer. You know, Dr. Boyer, who is a longtime um, uh, part of Bancroft, a meaningful part of Bancroft, walked right up to Elizabeth, hadn't seen her in, I'm going to say at the time, probably anywhere from 12 to 13 years, immediately walked right up and said, Elizabeth Tropia, I haven't seen you in 10 years. And we got to talking, and we found out that day about Bancroft. And proceeding before that, Liz was at places like Langhorn and another facility that, that, was, that was nearby that paled in comparison to the services that we get here. You know, and that's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to watch your parents try to care for their daughter, have to give that up and turn her over to another a, a facility that would help with, her, would help with that. Now, as a parent, now that now that I have children, you know, as a parent, no one is ever going to care for your child like you would. You know, no one. But when you have to give up that ability, when you have to give that up and turn it over to someone else, you want to see that that they do the best job they can, and that wasn't happening. You know, Liz would call constantly to us. Wouldn't remember because some of the short-term memory issues she have, but the phone calls would come in. 10, 11, 12 times a day, because she was bored. You know, she didn't do anything. She went to day, day, day program services, came home, and then that was it. You know, she sat there. There were no extracurricular activities. There were no events that happened at night. And when we met Dr. Boyer, Arlene was kind enough to bring my mom and me and Liz around to show us the campus. And I think, what, in a matter of maybe, maybe a week or two, I don't even think it was that, we were in Bancroft and I remember sitting at the kitchen table with my mom at the time and just shaking my head saying you know where was this you know where was this place for the last 10 years you know we, we felt like we hit the lottery and truly it's been a life-changing place to have in Liz's life and to give you an example I don't hear from Liz anymore <laughs> I you know, the only the only phone calls I get is I need money because I'm going out or I need money because I'm getting my nails done. It has been a it, it's just been a wonderful wonderful thing uh, for my family to be able to watch what Bancroft has done for my sister. You know, it's something that we could never never in a million years could we ever repay Bancroft and the people that work for them and staff that have given her a life that we did not think she would ever have. And I still say today that my biggest regret is my dad passed away in, our dad passed away in 2002. And he never got to see Liz at Bancroft. And it would, you know, it would have been a really, really terrific thing for him to see his little girl you know, taken care of just the way he wanted. You know, it was something that he actually, before he passed away, I remember at the kitchen table, you know, his concern was as they got older, who would take care of Liz? You know, my older siblings had already had children. They had already moved away. So as he looks at me, and I know what he was thinking, you know, just make sure you take care of her. To, for him to have been able to see where she is now and the kind of life that she lives and how she's taken care of, would have made him completely proud, completely proud. And, uh, you know, for that, we will, for a lifetime, we will thank Bancroft. So thank you very much.